now we're streaming okay. hello good morning welcome to the panel about the uh, cryptocurrencies uh, my benefit from regulation or not uh, we're here with my fellow panelists uh, where we're going to discuss uh, about crypto I think it looks like uh, still people connecting uh, I'll let you all to make your the introduction your, yourself and I'll I'll do mine at the end David, you want to start? Yes. Uh, yes. Hi, my name is David Smith. I present CEO of company Sandra. We do satellite engineering communications. We provide uh, end to end solutions uh, to aeronautical land, mobile and maritime. We work with um, the government, uh, commercial and international markets. Uh, we provide voice data and streaming video um, on the aeronautical side, on the land mobile side, and uh, the maritime side. Uh, that's what our company does. Uh, we provide a, a worldwide connectivity 24-7, uh, 365 days a week, um, uh, voice data and streaming video availability. And that's... Uh, what uh, our company does and we're based in the u.s um and i'm based in columbia maryland uh, right outside washington dc thank you that's a very interesting sector to be on you have probably a lot of insights to to bring about the use of blockchain to verify data and so on but i'll get back to that later on about your views from the perspective of satellites because it's probably one of the industries that all of us know the less that we all seen uh, in uh, many movies. Gotcha. Ragnar, what, what's your story? Yeah, hi, I'm Ragnar Thierson. I'm uh, a co-founder of a company called Avergo, a cybersecurity awareness training company. Uh, I used to be a penetration tester. Uh, I'm a sort of an ethical hacker and uh, Various other cybersecurity degrees, and uh, in my in my uh, in my work, I frequently come across uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, but usually not in a good way. So, uh, for good, for good or for bad? For bad. As a, <laughs> as a, um, you see more the part of uh, of the ransom part. Yes. The yeah, ransom, ransom and other other activities uh, that you, are not so so you do, you develop more your friendship with the bad guys yeah interesting <laughs> so lee what's your story sure uh so this is lee from uh, houston texas uh, howdy everyone uh so i'm the founder of rxi consulting uh we specialize provide um, a management service for bond managers uh, in crypto and renewable space, uh, starting from sourcing deals, investment, uh, making investment decisions, and also the um, uh, asset management. And that's it. So from the sourcing of opportunities yes. to the management of the portfolio and control. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So, okay. It's been a complicated week for the crypto industry, maybe, yeah. the last two maybe much more for the fund managers of the equities who are having a lot of fun with the fed but uh, what is crypto for each one of you how, how will you will we explain for the benefit of the public what is a uh, crypto assets or and its applications and your views on them who wants to, who wants to take this well why, I why, why i'll take I'll, I'll take ragnar for the bad things and maybe we can ask david for the good ones Oh, wow. <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll plead the fifth on the bad ones. <laughs> you go for the bad guys. That's no, I'll plead the fifth on it. I won't say, I, I talk about the positive side. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else can go on. Uh... So, Lee, what are your, your approach? What, what is true to you? There are a lot of people who talk about it, but it's very difficult for the public to understand. Well, I guess relative crypto as an industry is still relatively new. Um, so a lot, in, a lot of people's mind, including like say, you know, Warren Buffett and Charlie Mangold, that's you know, very, very seasoned experienced investors. They still think this is them. So 
um, just doesn't matter if people on this panel are familiar with crypto or not, it's still a very uh, upcoming industry. So there's a lot of misunderstanding, confusion, and fear. But that's you think it's first time. This is first time we, we see an industry that has a generation bridge, uh, a generational bridge. Uh, there are generation bridge in many industries. I'm also in renewable industry, so there's a huge generation bridge as well. So, <laughs> uh, but crypto is particular. Agree, crypto is particular generation uh, a gap uh, within the industry, and both investors and also the uh, the company standpoint. So, um, I just uh, well, from the, um, the high level, uh, the, all the global. Um, I do believe it's worldwide. Right now, we are uh, entering into a uh, somewhat uh, recession or stagflation at a global space. It, later in the year or beginning of the next year, ballpark. So right now, crypto is extremely highly co- um, linked to the um, uh, the global equity markets. So when the global equity markets tank, the crypto tank as well, particularly the, you know, the, the whole tech industry. So, uh, however, you know, as any investor, it's also a good time to buy, right? Everything is a little discounted. So that's just kind of like, no, very, very high level. Right, because it, it is the cryptos itself, they have different different use cases and there's a mix in between uh, what we might call uh, investment cases or commercial use cases where you may, for example, last week or from we did the settlement of Formula One Mi- Miami and the parts were paid in USDT, right? And then uh, on the other case, you have uh, people like Awergo defending uh, its clients from terrible the ransomware that uh, they got more sophisticated like exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities that maybe a few years ago were more difficult to find. And now they get more sophisticated. And do you, have, you, have you seen also, um, have you seen also Reinhardt an evolution on the uh, level of of the uh, artificial intelligence or sophistication used in how to attack companies and then get those some monies from crypto. Because crypto still is nascent and she points, but still a little bit the Wild West. So that allows both sides, the uh, clean activities and the most dirty ones. Yeah, and on the topic today where we're talking about reg- regulations, we'll, we'll go back to that uh, afterward. But uh, usually in in, um, in cybersecurity and, and hacking and uh, ransomware and, and such, it's uh, pretty much the uh, low path that is uh, uh, usually think. Uh, and now we... Uh, now we're seeing uh, ransomware coming closer. Uh, we have something called the ransomware as a service. A ransomware as a service is uh, similar to uh, you opening an online shop. Uh, if you're a cyber crim- criminal in any country, we're seeing this all over the world. We uh, were uh, uh, criminals, uh, usually not. Uh, in countries usually not uh, very cyber centric, like uh, maybe Cuba and Nigeria, criminal gangs in those con- countries are popping up with uh, sophisticated cyber attacks. So you, because- think, you think there is a sophistication between the Nigeria prince that will tell you send me a Western Union to the people who is now send me one Bitcoin or I'll, I'll expose you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Where where it was extremely low tech before. Uh, it's not very complicated for for a criminal to uh, to uh, set up uh, a ransomware uh, attack. And uh, as this is coming closer, as the danger is coming closer, uh, these criminals might have some influence in companies or, or or organizations where they can have people on the inside, right? Either, either for threats or, or for money install viruses from the inside. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's one problem. of the massive problems uh, to find out who who does the inside job uh, yeah. in many of those corporations. I'll get back a little bit to the point of the cryptocurrencies and regulations. As it is a national industry, it's being very difficult to for many governments to try to regulate what uh, it by its nature is, is decentralized, right? So everyone 
who is trying to go on this path. I think they're trying to go like it was a traditional asset class of securities that uh, is centralized. Well, it's the first time there is no central authority in an asset class. What are what are your views about that, guys? Uh, well, on the satellite uh, side, um, um, the benefits of um, regulations. Uh, from... But you are an ultra-regulated industry. I mean, you you can you, you, even for to move one finger in the space, you you need to get a license. Exactly, but the the benefits of regulation a regulation gives us time to basically be be innovative, do our R and D research. Um, and that will give us like, for example, you talked about Nigeria. I remember working on a project where we was doing facial recognitions over, over the border, uh, to track, um, uh, terrorist activities. Um, and to do these types of, of projects and, and an investigation we need regulation that gives us you know time to basically um give um a good analysis of of how how to you know how how, how to locate and track um these these type of um, situations that occur uh even on when uh even on the the banking side um uh, running uh transactions over the um uh banking transactions over satellite uh communications uh the more regulated we the more regulated uh, um, we are the more protection on the security side we can we can become um and i think that's some of the benefits of, of reg re regulation i hope hopefully i'm answering some of the questions so um, you your point is more as regulation is good as long as it is made with uh, common sense. But generally, most of most of the of the problems we have is that we we tend to have uh, politicians making regulations from their point of view for their common sense, which generally is uh, sometimes disaligned with the industry or require a lot of uh, gapping of expertise. Uh, Ragnar, from your experience, what what uh, what is another go back to leak after? What is your uh, your views about regulation? You turn that into, let's say, a more hybrid space that is in between of the getting regulated or not regulated in terms of internet and so on. Yeah, I think uh, if, if you uh, if you want to have regulation, it has to be designed that way from the beginning. Uh, you put it very well in. Uh, in before that uh, this is kind of like uh, Wild Wild West right now, uh, the gold diggers and uh, from my perspective, a lot of people forced to buy into the cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, yeah, the uh, if you want regulations, uh, the cryptocurrency has to be designed that way from the beginning. Uh, like uh, you have to know who, who owns its, its wallet and such. I hear, I hear from a from a guy who is into enforcement that American entities love the, the idea that blockchain provides permanent uh, permanent proof of uh, any crime. So eventually they might take longer or less, but they end tracking down the bad guys as long as they can associate uh, wallets and activity. Yeah, of course you can uh, you can uh, monitor each transaction, but uh, you you have no idea who uh, who the end uh, receiver is. But believe it or not, the most of the uh, of the uh, largest haze that have been investigated, it's like uh, remember the uh, colonial pipelines and so on. Eventually, they they if they put the effort, they end finding some trace at somewhere, and uh, the, those those wallets can be blacklisted and never used in any major exchange. Yeah, but uh, those are on a scale that uh, uh, you can have researchers. Uh, uh, into uh, finding who it was, but uh, in, in most cases, it's a uh, typical small company that loses a hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. So the, the the small cases are not pursued. Only the ones that are of public interest 
Yeah. Where, where we are now. Lee, yeah. your VIPs, regulation, hurdles, and opportunities. Uh, I would say it's both sides. Um, it, uh, everything, in my views, everything is both sides, pros and cons. And then, uh, so crypto or blockchain in general, you know, in the beginning when it started, it, it's for direct, supposed to be deregulated. But then now the industry has evolved to pretty much every possible country and sectors, uh, investors from everywhere too. Uh, so right now the industry is very, um, also very different from like, say five years ago when people are trying to do crypto and it's, it's all about you know, decentralization. And right now there are crypto companies focused on centralized finance and then some are focused on decentralized finance. Some are looking for regulations and they away from regulation. So it's very diverse like, that way. Uh, and also there are many companies uh, trying to be the bridge between um, uh, the regulators, the, the, spec, the market and also the regulated market or, or no regulation market. Um, and so, so I would say it's very, very diverse. And uh, from crypto company standpoint, that created a lot of the, uh, like a service provider right, for us, such as create a job, uh, job creation or more business opportunities. Yeah. Because the more diverse the um, um, subsectors, there's more reconciliation between the companies and the chains. And then that's just create more uh, job uh, opportunities for everyone. And then uh, since I, we focus on international uh, market, one thing I have to mention is uh, regulation, uh, especially from investor standpoint, is major, I mean, mostly from the U.S. market. Uh, the U.S. market has been so, you know, U.S. proper Z country have the most uh, legal or regulatory type of uh, uh, practice. So the people here, uh, regardless the investors or the uh, creators or startup or companies, the brain are, are wanted for anything regulatory type of driven activities. Anytime they, you know, even when they design the product, is all designed for regulation. So uh, that's just unique for the U.S. market. And with that, just come with a lot of the uh, the the, uh, the compliance work, a very complete compliance work. So the good thing, you know, is 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 a you know, it, it's a lot of work for the business. Uh, and on the other side, it creates a very high barrier to enter the market from the international equitable mm -hmm. uh, players. So that's kind of a very high level view. That's very aligned with the idea of the uh, U.S. always on anything related to securities or money. Yes, there's, there's a high barrier to standardize the markets. Yeah. So you you try to keep back actors from participating on them. Yeah. So same time, uh, the most because I also lived in Europe before, and the most of the European startup companies or crypto companies, when they uh, they all some some of them made it very clear no U.S. investors because everything you know U.S. investors make very complicated from a compliance standpoint, um, and then and then there are uh, like. Uh, yeah, so 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 the international crypto company they made it very clear uh, with uh, they welcome U.S. on uh, non-U.S. investors. That's one thing, and then the other part is come to a regulatory standpoint. Um, as we, we just discussed earlier, crypto does have huge generation gap, so tend to attract younger generation, and then uh, and also it's difficult for the um, uh, in general speaking for the older generation to accept this concept, uh, and then so. You know, by default, a lot of people positions in the regulatory position, the people are tend to be in the older generation. So I would say the majority of regulatory space people are kind of against the uh, uh, crypto uh, activities. However, there are very limited you know, uh, government officials are pro crypto. That's why the you know, Bitcoin still you know, lobby them a lot. I think it's very related on the ability uh, to sometimes to be sorry or, or be shy about saying, I don't know about this topic, right? I was uh, this week in London with a bunch of uh, crypto-related people, and there were a lot of bankers and Noriel Rubinis and this kind and this kind of crap. And eventually, what you realize is that the guys who are innovating in crypto are two languages away of the institutional guys. So you go to the guy of you know, Alliance Bursting Friend or whatever, and you tell them crypto is I don't know about crypto, or even journalists who are investigative journalists have a track record of uncovering uh, uh, scandals. And you tell them crypto is full of scandals. Just have a look on what recently happened, and that will take me to Jim Jim's question about Luna. And and the answer, even from the journal, is like, I don't understand about crypto, but you uncover three, five major scandals in the last year, especially one 
one of them there was there's an ex uh, said Pulitzer Prize for finding a scandal and making a book about it. And I have to, I have to make one comment. There's more scandals, money laundries, um, you know, crypto ev um, uh, events with dollars, right? There's a lot more criminal activity with using U.S. dollars. Yeah, which is eventually tolerated and paid uh, every year by some banks who, in my opinion, have a dedicated budget to pay fines. Yeah. Um, I can relate that to the public to go on uh, sources such Financial Times and Wall Street Journal and see who are the reincident guys where no one get, goes to jail. By the way, that's very interesting. If we, as small, medium companies, do wrong, we, we really uh, pay the regulatory consequences with, with jail time, while the larger ones... In general, they tend to escape. Yeah, like Goldman Sachs. Yeah, yeah there was a famous scandal called uh, One MDB. That, uh, funny enough, the, that that money was used to pay the the movie Wolf of Wall Street, which is the and for me, just imagine in terms of regulatory perspective, the irony of paying a blockbuster movie with money stolen from a from a sovereign fund. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's the kind of things that never ends surprising me. All these yeah, parallels. Most, most regulations um, benefit the, 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 the large corporations. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, so. yeah, because with the fine, you avoid the, sending your, your director to jail. Right, right, right. So Because an excuse is that we were too big, we are systematic XYZ, and they are not closed down or, or, or scrapped it in pieces. That's also pretty interesting. I'll get back to Jim John's question about uh, Luna. Uh, will this affect the regulatory push uh, between uh, regulators? Uh, in the US, there's no such thing as a federal law, for example, which is there's state law, so only state laws for to regulate uh, crypto in some, in some regions. There's no federal directive. In Europe, the approach is being uh, to make something very restrictive probably influenced by lobby lobby potentials that uh, are t tend to have to be around in Brussels in uh, in decent numbers what what are your approaches about what happened with Luna and the regulatory consequences my, my stance is that eventually people find out, found out that it was a, an excellent exercise as long as it goes up like the famous uh, thing of stocks only go up right it was going to be well. But at the point of uh, where you have uh, three different assets interlinked, dollar to to a stable coin and a stable coin backed by an algo, uh, a variable pricing uh, entity, let's say, or la Luna in this case, yeah, it eventually could, could collapse, but nobody see, saw it coming. Who wants to start with that? Maybe, maybe Ragnar, from your more uh, uh, conservative perspective in terms of uh, of uh, cyber, you can make your, take your take. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not an econ economist, so uh, but uh, my two cents are uh, okay. If you, if you have a currency, there has to be some kind of value or belief behind it, and uh, maybe in this. In order, case, in order to facilitate everyone to understand, it was something like uh, Lee has a currency. Okay. She has 400,000 tokens, and each token is worth $10, and maybe tomorrow 11, 12, whatever. This token is supposed to back David's stable coin, okay? And that's the pool of liquidity that backs this stable coin that it's pegged to US dollar. So eventually, if you run out of the supply of the of this coin, and uh, the, David's coin gets a massive devaluation, when uh, the pool on the right uh, gets cleaned up, and and in and, and, and any event of uh, of drawdown, which is what they did, they blow up 3.5 billion uh, in Bitcoin to try to save the coin. And when there was nothing left, it gone down anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there has to be a a value or, or at least a perceived uh, value behind uh, if we want uh, people to buy in. I still, I still find fascinating how people keep using th words like algorithmic, artificial intelligence, government, or the, those uh, hypey words or, that are around old decks uh, as uh, 
it gives you a fake sense of uh, trust and it also made a lot of money for retails which eventually uh, they lost and some of them uh, posted in a in a reddit post that they were seeking for suicide and there are a lot of people with crazy stories out there people who uh, mortgage their homes to invest in luna and things like that i mean I guess that they get back to our topic, which is regulation. One of the major issues that regulators have is try to protect the retail investors, the ones that uh, are more uh, sensible to the idea of that uh, this is close to gambling. What do you think, David? Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's close to like what you're saying. It's close to gambling stock market. I, um. <laughs> is, it, is it a little bit like the trend started by Robinhood? By the way, Robinhood two weeks ago uh, just fired thirty percent of the of the people of the of their employees. So, I mean, it was something maybe followed by the pandemic. People at home with their computers, like click, click, click. Yeah. Uh, I take a step on it. Um, I, I guess there's the first. You know, myself is a is a um, um, investor, and also I work as investment management as well uh, in both crypto and renewable space. So, come to investment. It's a very um, it's a lot of work, right? You got to be disciplined. You have a strategy, and the, uh, the right capital to deploy. And understand the market. And understand the, uh, the the project you are investing into. So it it requires a significant amount of work just to understand a small niche of this industry. However, in the uh, the general um, market, the people you know, a lot of people claim they are investors are more like a, just you know, speculators or getting money from big people. Uh, I have no investment discipline strategy. Does not understand the underlying uh, assets at all, and they don't have a uh, risk management uh, process and, and the system in, in place. This is for crypto uh, and also for general equity investment, or, or even for real estate. When I mean, you see all kinds of people uh, do crazy uh, things, thinking they are doing the right investment, right? Uh, so. Um, yes, it's sorry for Luna, but right now the equity market, uh, even on the tech, uh, equity, you know, the market space, we're talking about six to um, even eighty percent of the loss anyway. In general, across the you know industry, so I think Luna is on extreme side, but it's kind of the unfortunate things uh, happen right now. And then uh, again, uh, I used to know for some investors, yeah. Isn't it a hint of the idea that we let the uh, valuations go high and skyrocket and then we let the perception that things never go down, that uh, provides greedy, some... Right? <laughs> Basic greedy, indication of greedy. Yeah, yeah well, the 80s idea that used to be about greed is good. Well, maybe no longer. Still, this is why I guess I think also the industry is trying to promote ISGs with the idea that there are a lot of hidden risks related to governance or ways of uh, operating or moral principles that later on unveil things like the one that happened with Luna. So it'll be interesting how it play out. By the way, yesterday when I checked the price, it was about 0 0.09. Yeah, it's almost zero. And also Coinbase already suspended Luna from, from institutional. All right, so... Let's move to the next uh, things. Another hot topic, the sanctions and the tools that might provide uh, crypto to evade them, at least at some degree. I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, joint change bomb factor here about how an entire country could move uh, to Bitcoin out of the blue and try to evade the American sanctions. But I think the, the Americans have... Uh, a pretty good grasp. There's a lot of uh, rumors in the industry on how deep they are. So, so who wants to take this one? Ragnar, perspective of uh, someone in the defense side. Yeah. Uh, Given there's a lot of thought on that, I, I think that uh, uh, big uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum and, uh, and such, they're just too big to be sanctioned. Uh, 
for for you to uh, gain control, you need 51% of the nodes, and uh, in that case, it's just uh, I think it's not possible unless there's a major. Uh, well, we say in, say in, uh, in cyber security, nothing is 100% secure. And so, uh, uh, but uh, gaining 51% of all, all nodes in these big, uh, in these big uh, cryptocurrencies, it's a very hard task or next to impossible. Isn't, isn't a little bit full from, uh, from governments to try to think that this is a centralized place where you click a button and out of the blue, you restricted the traffic like a Swift network. Uh, well, we are talking about, let's say, independent nodes that talk to each other or interact with each other. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as central authority. Central authority. Yeah, but uh, if, if you gain over over half of the nodes, uh, you you gain control. Uh, but, uh, I think it's uh, yeah next to impossible task for big currencies like uh, like those. It, that's what that's one of the things that uh, Bitcoin and and all those mains were proud about is that no one was really able at all to to gather full control of any of them. Yeah. So by by design, they are almost pretty secure. Nothing in 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 cyber is secure enough. So yeah, and we've been uh, yeah we be, we been we've been uh, seeing uh, major uh, major uh, hacks. Uh, just uh, emptying people's wallets, uh, but uh, not the, the currency itself. There's, there's also another kind of hack that is appearing, at least in, I, I heard about it in Spain. There's a physical uh, assault on people to empty their wallets as soon as they start flashing their lives uh, out of the blue in non-recommendable areas. You know? It's like, uh, I don't want to say any specific city or any specific neighborhood, right? But it's like if you move from Manhattan to somewhere else, you should not be flexing certain things or certain diamonds uh, in order to to be safe. Uh, yeah, the uh, the design of uh, of it, it's, even though it's decentralized, uh, if if uh, someone someone uh, gets a hold of your data and your passwords, it's it's not your data anymore. It's the same yeah. as in any any other system. But that's the physical one. I was hearing last, last, last. Sorry, digital ones. I was hearing last week about a, a guy who was assaulted, and the uh, the assaultants uh, made him send a test. And as soon as they found that this was good, they made him empty up 1.3 million euros from his uh, wallets, and they discovered him as a target as soon as he started changing his lifestyle. So this this, this is a new trend. He, generally, you won't be assaulted for emptying your car, wallets, whatever. Now, this is this kind of cyber, of, uh, cyber and physical crime where there are uh, organized crimes, the uh, attacks on people who are crypto crypto holders. And by the way, it always goes related to not taking the measures of working with cybersecurity entities that help you to secure your wallets. I'm, I'm familiar with, I, I have someone in mind, he, he will, walk on the street with eight million dollars in USDTs and I told him what the fuck you're doing with your with your life, right? So that this this idea isn't isn't that fueled by the idea, David and Lee, that we it's we're always safe because things happen to other people. Until it happened to the very of us. Yeah, I think it's the same as in any other there's uh there's no shortage of the people wanting to divide uh, you from your money. So it's the same as in crypto. David, from a standpoint of uh, security, what are your thoughts? Well, I know like even with the State Department, um, there's a certain amount of data. They don't want you moving through like, say, the Chinese teleports <laughs> because of data being snatched. And so you got to move it from different locations and I remember one time meeting with the uh, UAE um, and they wanted private they wanted their own private lines 
so no one has access to them. And it would cost them you know, a certain amount of money, which, you know, over in Dubai and places like that, they don't have no problem with money over there. Not an issue. Oh, no, I, uh, I live there. So okay. I can tell you, I'm a white resident. And I can tell you, I've never seen so much flow of money. Even you, they could use uh, money to clean the streets. Right. So private lines and, you know, based on, you know, for keeping people from, 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 from hacking in there. But on the security side, it's protecting your data, knowing where to move it, knowing how to move it. And, but most people that's in crypto currency, they're not thinking that. They're not thinking, they're not thinking like that because and then when their wallets get, get, get hacked or taken, then they start thinking about it. But, you know, if you can work out your own private lines and, isn't that very related to like it, like you say those uh, governments who eventually that know that they are not invincible at some point and they need to protect the data and these for example the Spanish government they they just unveiled that the president was uh, hacked on his phone and they say it in public which it doesn't have a lot of strategic sense in terms of telling hello we're here with vulnerables please attack me we like it and and basically isn't I think in the crypto industry there's a a naive factor of making money off the nowhere and considering that you you it's going to be there forever, right? The yeah. the, the invincible factor of uh, of being successful from the out of of, of no blue no because they did the acquisitions and they made they eventually purchased the assets, but it's it's like it only happened to other people. This factor that yeah, yeah it's it's for the neighbor. That's uh, that's probably more common. Uh, you, you Lisa see that on the between portfolio managers, who think uh, everyone else take the drawdowns, but I uh, my strategy my it's number one. And you see probably Ragnar that on your on your end in terms of those companies, like everyone else take the blows, not us, because we have a, an extreme cool chef and chef uh, security officer. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Lee. Well, it's a still growing industry, right? So a lot of uh, things, uh, as you know, there's growing pain uh, as an industry in general, and then, um, but the, the things you just described can happen in uh, in any type of currency or any industry. So uh, I, I don't see this you know, presentation special from that standpoint. What do you think, Ragnar? Uh, yeah, um, n- no comment. <laughs> <laughs> the the neighbor factor to everyone else but me. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, we have a saying in cyber, uh, at least here in Iceland, when uh, uh, bad things can ha- well, bad things uh, don't happen to me, and I I won't believe it until I uh, it happens to me twice. And uh, so that's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, who is, who is uh, focusing on me in factor? That's uh, very. Yeah, and this is how things like uh, Solaris uh, hacking and all this stuff got so far. It's because people really, uh, really overwhelm uh, how it happened. This, it, this is the same parallelism on how scandals go far too. On in terms of in money when there is a big uh, f- fall down, it's because people obvious ob- 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 skip the part of due diligence, considering that other people have better information than themselves. And it's something that happens all the time in crypto. It's like if the Gates Foundation is invested in this entity, why why am I going to be able to know more than Gates, right? Yeah. Well, I spend a huge amount of time doing decisions for anything I touch. So, um, so all I can say is do your, do your homework, know the market, know the players. Um, there's no other shortcut. You know, you know what I find more interesting is that most of these scandals generally are found when uh, a junior analyst that doesn't follow the official line mm-hmm. arrives and finds uh, data that no one was paying attention with. Yeah. And there is a mix in between uh, if the stake in play by the entity is too big, generally is dismissed, mm-hmm. or if he finds a senior management who says continue with your quest with your line of questions, then uh, 
those the, the, those things go go down pretty quickly. There's been a few of them, especially one in Germany that we we all remember where the guy is still at, at large, right? Wirecard or uh, the Abra group, which nobody remembers. And it's a constant. And same stories uh, only change the people who take part of them. Yeah, on my side as an investor, um, yeah, or, you know, with, with a large portfolio for renewable side, I would say uh, we, even with a not a sophisticated investment or institutional investor uh, situation, the trading policy, the investment policy, and the risk management policy in place is sufficient enough to cover the most scams, uh, and you know, and per, you know, at least pro, pro protect you from the um, auto norm type of a loss already, even for a so, not sophisticated risk management policy. Yeah. So risk management policy will be yeah. one of the takeaways uh, for uh, either whatever satellites of uh, cyber, and yeah, it's. People abuse the the risk management because the you know, the neighbor effect is for everyone else. No? Uh, we're getting close to finishing the in, fi in the next five minutes. If anyone of the of the session has any questions for the panelists, feel free feel free to drop it. Uh, any additional considerations on things we we haven't got? I think I have a a question about. Uh, do you think guys uh, regulation will be effective at some point? Or we're still in an industry well, we're five, ten years away of getting it done. And will this bring a full fair equality or increase the the divide between uh, humanity or or uh, let's say uh, social sectors that will not necessarily benefit of of digital assets? Well, I think uh, while we, what, uh, as we are today, uh, regulation is uh, uh, quite hard. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's vast. It's uh, decentralized, and nobody know who, who which person is, and uh, uh, and it, it's also full of speculators. Uh, people wanting to get on the train, getting fast rates, and. Uh, uh, so uh, I think we're in the infancy of uh, cryptocurrencies, but uh, hopefully it will get better. David? Um, yeah, I I agree um, with what was just said that basically we're still probably far, you know, not, not close to regulating. And I, I personally think that as an investor, you need to have a security system in place for yourself yeah um to help protect you and then as you the regulations come along which benefits the large guys most of the time yep at least you are protected but you you need mm -hmm. to have that in your um, strategic uh, plan. Have a plan. yeah, have, yeah. A security okay. plan. have a security plan and i believe that's that's one of the have a plan and a contingency plan yeah. yeah that's what you that's what you mean Yes, uh -huh. yes. So an issue line and be ready to pivot quickly as soon as there's regulations or surprises right. or security challenges. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's my takeaway. Lee, your views? So crypto in general is a very fast moving industry. It's 24 seven business and the regulation in general is very slow. Uh, so there's a huge gap both on understanding and, and technology wise, uh, how to, um, um, how things work. So the regulations generally way behind of the current operation. So as investor, you know, if the government regulation does not have enough, the, you know, whatever rules or regulation to protect you, you need to smart enough to protect yourself as investor. So uh, that's just the inherited uh, risk within this industry. Not for people slow mover um trying to rely on government regulation and, and still make money this if, if they have that mentality they don't even get in, get into the industry in the first place yeah so not not for conservative people if you no, no. want peace and tranquility go and get a deposit um i would say don't get into this industry as a direct investor because most of large institutional investors including pension funds they already have enough uh, some exposure to the crypto or digital currency in general so the large ones, um, they are, you know, they spend enough time to study this type of uh, asset class and also have enough the uh, 
the resource to do the risk management uh, or self you know, protect themselves um, for their investor. Find, uh, find good managers with good track record. Yes, yes. To have an indirect exposure, never go uh, in it without the sufficient knowledge. Correct. I mean, that's just for any uh, asset class, not particularly for crypto. Yeah, it's yeah. investment investment 101, but particularly yeah. in this one, it's very easy to get lost. Ragnar, your last take and we're finishing. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, been fun talking about this. Uh, as I said, I'm not a crypto uh, uh, engineer or, or also, and uh, but uh, getting to know the other side, it's also <laughs> very nice. Yeah, it's crypto. For me, my last takeaway with crypto is the is the neighbor the is the most unknown thing for for many people for multiple reasons. There's not much interest on on divulgating about, and it's full of a, a mix between uh, professional money and also idealist people who still want to change the world without figuring out that there are rules out there that uh, and that you cannot be libertarian in in financial markets uh, up to some extent only but not not beyond the the rules so uh, thank you so much to all for the uh, session we'll be stopping here please uh, follow all the other panels and thank you for the american counterparts who are awake at a record time of 4 a.m so <laughs> I don't know if it was uh, caffeine driven or uh, reading books until late. You you need to tell me that secret. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.